You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Elizabeth Redenball is our guest on uh, this edition of Byline. We're talking about school redistricting. Um, how do you think this whole issue will be resolved? We have a work session actually this week, um, and so that's going to get hammered out. We're starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. and But we, we've had uh, months of this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, no, maybe we're going to change it a little bit. We're going to tweak it a little bit. This is the way it uh, is. Is that public opinion? They have that oh yes absolutely it is uh, you know and I don't have a crystal ball right. I don't know how it's going to end up you know we've got there actually there I'm glad you asked this um, there are really three issues in play with this redistricting you do have the socioeconomic diversity versus neighborhood school you know con you know that conflict there right. but then you also have the school board built a you know that the, that eighth middle school in Castle Hain Holly Shelter Middle and it was envisioned to serve the northern portion of our county however the site that they selected is not where the population density is. It's actually, like, in some cases, 13 miles away from the homes that it was intended to serve. And so you have uh, you know, folks that are in the northern part of our county and being upset about that, and rightfully so. That's a long bus ride. I think anybody will agree that it, that it is. It'll take them. It, you know, it, I drove it in my car and it took me 20 minutes. It's going to take much longer on a bus. It stops and goes for It will. Right? It will, undoubtedly. So there's that issue as well. So there's a lot of pressure from those folks to, to keep their, their students in what they consider to be their neighborhood school, which is noble. So unfortunately, we didn't put that school closer to that population. Right. Uh, a recent report revealed that one large North Carolina school system admitted that low-performing, high-poverty schools didn't have the same quality of teachers that higher performing schools had. Well, what do you make of that? And do you think that exists in New Hanover County? I think I have spent a lot of time in our high poverty, high minority schools, and there are some of the most wonderful, dedicated teachers you will ever see. As far as attracting new te or teachers to those schools, uh, you know, typically you, from what I have been told from our, our senior staff, it is difficult to get teachers that have a lot of experience that are in some of our high performing schools to transfer to those typically low performing schools. So there schools. is something to that. There is something to that, but we also have amazing teachers. They are unbelievably dedicated. So you it's cannot. It's got to be very frustrating to work at a school where it's very, uh, it's, it's difficult to get the message to kids. Uh, the, the, the home environment probably isn't as supportive as, uh, no, you're, you're as maybe right. in a higher performing school. You're exactly right. And uh, I guess the burnout rate would be higher in those kinds of schools. And I think that it is. I was actually at Williston Middle the other day and I asked the assistant principal just that question. You know, do your teachers feel, you know, you know, how are they reacting when people say, okay, they're not the greatest teachers? And I think, you know, they have to motivate themselves. And he said, you know, we're really not impacted by that. We know we're doing a good job. And, and they are. I mean, they are doing amazing, amazing work uh, in those schools. Uh, and in that case where they, they found this, the study found that the, uh, the, the uh, lower performing schools had uh, uh, not as highly skilled teachers, the superintendent of schools, and this I think was in the Charlotte Mecklenburg school okay. system, linked pay to performance. And the reports were that it, it, he's made some significant progress in a, achievement gains with students in those underperforming schools, linking pay to performance with teachers at those schools. Mm -hmm. And I know that's an idea that has been kicked about here in New Hanover County. I am aware in Mobile, Alabama, they did that and they offered they offered a higher rate of pay for those teachers to elect to go and serve in these low-performing schools. And within three years, 41% of those teachers had left their jobs. So. You know, I think actually, I, mean, I don't think that redistricting for diversity is the panacea. It is not the cure all. There's a lot of other components, components that have to come into alignment that I'm hoping and praying that our strategic plan that we worked so hard on, that if, if, we, if we could have that diversity within our schools and have that strategic plan um, implemented then the two, you know, those, all those things coming in alignment, then you're going to see that growth throughout let's, your entire district. Let's shift our focus for okay. a moment to an issue that surfaced about building a communications tower okay. for cell phone transmissions behind the Murrayville Elementary School. Okay. There's a lot of parents uh, oppose it because of worries about health risks. What, what's your stand on that? 
You know, uh, that came up this summer. And honestly, when it came before us and it was on our agenda, my main concern about safety was, is there a fence around that cell phone tower? Because I know my children, I've got three, they would climb it. If it was, if it was anywhere near them, they would climb it. And so that was my main concern. Radiation, I think. Is, uh, right, um, yeah. And, and that, that wasn't on your radar screen. It was not time. on my radar screen. No I had intended. No, it wasn't. I had, <laughs> I had no idea. Right. And actually, and that's, that's a, a good example where public opinion and the public communicating with the board has brought those does that, that issue yeah it does I've met with concerns? some parents that uh, have raised that issue and I'm very very concerned about what it. about what about the controversy surrounding Titan cement building a plant within a short radius of three New Hanover County elementary schools some say there are potential health health risks uh, there as well right you know and again that I wish I had been on the board when we, that we were making the decision to build uh, Castle Hain Elementary and Holly Shelter Middle are two of those schools that are going to be so close to that, that Titan plant. But we, we being the board, made the decision to build those schools near, well, in, a, in, a, in an area that was close to land that was zoned heavy industry. So it's kind of hard at this point to say, oh, wait a minute, um, you know, you can't do that when you willingly purchased that land in yeah. an area that you knew was near heavy industry. So it does create such a conundrum. Uh, you have what, three more years? I do, yeah, I'm about to finish my first year. <laughs> uh, was, it, was it what you expected it to be? Yes and no. Uh, I mean, it has been, it is definitely a full-time job or very close to that. Um, it do you does, like it? You know, I love it. You do? I really do. I mean, I, I haven't enjoyed, obviously, the controversy and, and, you know, the emails saying, you know, I support neighborhood schools and I vote and, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure if you run for re-election that you're pretty. not. Oh, they get really ugly. Um, <laughs> that I don't like. Um, but I don't think anybody would unless you're just a glutton for punishment. But, you know, I love having the... Uh, the opportunity to serve the public, to to serve our children in New Hanover County, and to, to make you know change that's going to positively impact their lives. We're almost that out of we're almost out of time, and I, I asked you this when you walked in because I'm fascinated by how you juggle everything. <laughs> Wife, you have three children. We do. Very active children. You're a practicing attorney. You're a school board member. How do you do it all? I have a very supportive husband. Is that it? I, I do. And I'm one of those people that give me more and I, you know, I can raise to the challenge. If, if you take away things, I just, I don't get things done. Do you I mean, want to run again? I don't know. I'm, that, I will wait and see when, it, when the time draws near. It just depends on what I feel called to do. I feel very called to be here now. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. To you Thank and you your very family. Much. Next week, uh, Brunswick County Sheriff John Ingram will join us. He's got a lot on his plate. Uh, after replacing a, a corrupt administration, we'll talk to him about some of his challenges. I'm Don Ansel from Byline Wilmington. Have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning at 11 as we explore the issues that concern you.